Okay, let's see if turning on the power lets out any more blue smoke. This video depicts servicing live equipment containing a cathode ray tube. The equipment contains potentially lethal voltages. These voltages may persist even after AC power is removed. A CRT in operation, particularly an older one such as is present in this unit, may emit harmful amounts of X-ray radiation when in operation. A CRT also contains a high vacuum and may implode violently if broken. Please use appropriate personal protective equipment and do not attempt to service units like this if you are not trained to deal with the hazards. Hi, I'm Kevin. Welcome to my cave. A few months ago, I started work on restoring this military oscilloscope, built by Tektronix in the early 1970s. It had a bunch of weird failures when I turned it on. I immediately suspected the low-voltage power supply. Sure enough, the negative 15-volt supply ran a couple of volts low, and getting an oscilloscope on it showed that it was sagging on every half cycle of the power line. Getting the power supply out of the case was a saga of stripped screws, but I was eventually able to probe the unregulated supply that fed the negative 15-volt regulator, and the filter capacitor was not up to par. Getting access to the capacitor needed a bunch of desoldering, and even required drilling out some frozen screws that wouldn't yield to penetrant in an impact driver. Once they were drilled, a screw extractor and a tap handle managed to pull them. With the big aluminum can of the capacitor sucking the heat away, desoldering the capacitor itself was challenging, but I eventually got it out. There's a bit of an unsolved mystery why a 25-volt capacitor was on an unregulated supply that both schematic and scopes had peaked at 27 volts, but that's what the schematic said. The ones on the positive 27-volt unregulated supply also say 25 volts on the schematic, but the ones in the scope are 30-volt units from a different manufacturer. I guess it doesn't matter in the end, though. I'll use a modern replacement, probably a 50-volt unit. I sketched an idea for an adapter, drew it up in KiCad, and a few days later I had a batch of adapter boards in hand. And then I had to put the project on hold for a while, while I scrambled to get more important videos out and get some paid work done. But now I have a little bit of time to work on this beast again. Before we continue, let me interrupt for just a moment. Longtime viewers of this channel will know that it's always free to all comers. Nothing is ever paywalled. But I do end each video asking one thing, that you take care of one another. To that end, all the advertising revenue that I earn from this channel goes to charity. The current feature charity is called Heifer International. Heifer's mission is to end hunger and poverty in partnership with the communities it serves. It begins with a seed investment in livestock or agriculture, together with mentorship to help its participants build a business. The participants, small farmers, ranchers, and female business owners, are able to learn a living income and continuously lift up their communities as they train the next generation of leaders. I'd like to ask you to join me in supporting this organization. I set a goal of $500, which is enough to give a cow to a family in need, together with training and education in how to care for her and how to access the market for her milk. I know that with the generosity of Kevin's cave people, we'll just crush that goal. Won't you help out today? There's a link to donate, up here, or down there, or at any rate, somewhere nearby. Thanks so much, and now, back to the video. The first thing that I discovered when I picked it up again was that the blue tape didn't stick all that well on the multi-pin connectors, so I lost some orientations. I had pictures that I could probably match up, but then I saw that there are arrows on all the connectors that match up with corresponding arrows on the PC board. Phew! In place of the machine pins I sketched, I decided to make posts out of little snippets of 14-gauge wire. Those got soldered into the little adapter. And off-camera, I trimmed them all flush. 
Then I did the same for the capacitor pins. The cell assembly got a quick bath in isopropyl alcohol to clean off the flux. I'd done the same sort of cleaning on the other side of the board off camera after installing the posts. The result wasn't the prettiest job I've done, but it should be serviceable. Then I had the problem of prepping the board. There was still a lot of old crusty solder in the holes. What finally worked to get it all cleaned out was to get more flux on it and apply ultra-low melting point solder to dissolve the old stuff. I got out what I could with a solder sucker, and then cleaned out the rest with more flux and little snippets of solder wick. It's the first time I tried doing this with the low temperature solder, and it's a game changer. The holes cleaned right out. Then I fluxed the pads yet again, inserted the capacitor and adapter, and soldered all the posts in place. In retrospect, I should have used more flux. It was hard getting the solder to flow properly. Next, off-camera, all the places that I worked on got another bath at isopropyl alcohol to clean up not only the excess flux, but also the penetrant, cutting oil, and chips left over from dealing with the frozen mounting screws. I also discovered that all the handling had broken one lead on the power transformer. So I stripped it back, and cleaned out the hole in the PC board with the same technique of adding flux, applying low temperature solder, and mopping up with solder wick. I did all the mechanical reassembly, which included using a tap to chase all the threads that held the frozen screws. I replaced all the damaged screws with regular old Phillips head screws from the hardware store, because I still haven't found a source for small quantities of PosiDrive screws in imperial sizes. I removed all the plugins, and now comes the moment of truth. Turn on the power, and start probing the test points. I finally found the correct test point for the negative 50 volt supply, and the pot that tweaks the voltage. I adjusted it within spec easily, and now I could check the other voltages. First, I had to find the negative 130 volt test point. Once I had it, I needed to pause and look up the spec because I didn't remember how loose the tolerance was. Then on to positive 50, positive 15, negative 15, which had been a problem before, and a double check of negative 50. They all look good. Okay, let's do a functional check using one horizontal and one vertical plugin. I'll plug in a probe. And look at the built-in calibrator.
the trigger level needs a tweak. And so does the compensation on the probe. And the trace rotation needs a bit of touching up, along with the vertical gain. After that, the display looks great. 1 kHz square wave at 1 volt peak to peak. Let's try the second plug-in. Switch the cable. Change the signal source. And wait for the thing to warm up again. A bit of fiddling with triggering again. And a touch up on the gain. And it looks pretty much perfect. Let's hook up my function generator to the two inputs. I could show a nice pair of waves. Once I remember how to set up for an XY display, I could put up a nice Lissajou figure. And I could change the frequency of one wave to make a fancier one. I might need to do a little more testing, but I think this scope is working again. With that said, I don't have access to a Tektronix calibration fixture to be sure that everything is in spec. I'm amazed that all the scope needed was a replacement for one bad capacitor. This thing is at least 50 years old, and it's been sitting unused in my garage for at least 20. Tektronix sure knew how to build them. I've got a couple of ideas for fun projects that really need an analog scope, so you're probably going to see this scope brought out in future episodes. But right now I want to get it off the bench, where it's taking up way too much space, so I can do a little bit more work on the transistor and op-amp series. I hope you'll stay tuned for those, and perhaps I ask YouTube to tell you when they come out. Until next time, stay safe, stay healthy, stay curious, and take care of one another. Bye.